and in Jesus enter the house of the Lord. Suddenly come to his temple, and the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soul. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi, and refine them like gold and silver, and they will bring offerings in righteousness to the Lord. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, 
as in the days of old and as in former years behold i will send you elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the lord comes and he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers lest i come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction the word of the lord thanks be to god our response to god's word is look up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near Make me know your ways teach me your paths guide me in your truth and teach me for you are the god of my salvation response look up and praise your heavens your redemption is so good and upright is the lord He shows the way to sinners. He guides the humble in right judgment. To the humble he teaches his way. Response Look up and praise your heavenly host. Your redemption is coming near. All the Lord's paths are mercy and faithfulness. For those who keep his covenant and commands the Lord's secret is for those who fear him to them he reveals his covenant response look up and raise your hands because your redemption is drawing near church come and save man whom you formed from the dust The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. The time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. And her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. And on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child. and they would have called him Zechariah after his father but his mother answered no he shall be called John and they said to her none of your relatives is called by this name and they made signs to his father inquiring what he wanted him to be called and he asked for a writing tablet and wrote his name is John and they all wondered And immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue loosed and he spoke blessing God and fear came on all their neighbors and all of these things were talked about through all the hill country of Judea and all who heard them 
laid them up in their hearts, saying, What then will this child be? For the hand of the Lord was with him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. What then will this child be? A career analyst was giving a TED talk and spoke very emphatically and strongly to a crowd of adults who were present, imploring them, your duty is to advise and to suggest what your children can become career-wise. Your job is not to decide for them. So true. Every time a child is born, the parents will always wonder what will this child be or become. And perhaps that was the reason why the crowd around that time wondered what would this child be. Little did they know that God had a plan for this child who would eventually grow up to be John the Baptist, the one to prepare the way for the Saviour. The one who would announce his arrival, the one who would baptize with water, and the one who would say very strongly, I'm not even worthy to untie the sandals of the one who comes after me. John means Yahweh is gracious. And indeed God was gracious to Elizabeth and Zechariah with the birth of this child. Of course, with an exception for Zechariah, who had that beautiful annunciation, his own experience of what the angel was to say. For the others, they were clueless and they were not aware of what God's plan was for John. Each of us, my dear brothers and sisters, can also be a John in some way or the other, announcing and giving the good news of Jesus to others, acknowledging the fact that when we do this and when we do the work of the Lord, Jesus must increase and we must decrease. When Jesus arrives on the scene, we need to move into the background. And above all, we need to realize our own unworthiness in the presence of the Lord. And offer to him, take our bread. Our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, 
Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life 
and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, O mighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. An act of spiritual communion. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul to enrich me with your holy grace and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your Divine Will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Prince of peace, come, Prince of peace. 
Let us pray. Grant your peace, Lord, to those who have nourished with these heavenly gifts, that we may be ready with lighted lamps to meet your dearly beloved Son at his coming, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Prayer for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for a quick control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We pray for the doctors doing research that an effective vaccine to combat the sickness is speedily found. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may the peace and blessed Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sing it out of the show.